Welcome to the Heather Pity Podcast. This podcast is about going after the life that you're made for, not just surviving life, but actually thriving. So thanks for joining us. Let's jump in. Hi, I'm so happy to have you here today, Dan. I want to uh, welcome so, you. <laughs> so happy to be with you and with all of the listeners today. Yeah, thanks, Heather. You're welcome. We have Dan Hawkinson here, who is both a coach and consultant, but uh, my favorite title for him is my friend. <laughs> and a my colleague because we both work in the coaching field. So I wanted to have Dan on today because we're talking about meeting at the crossroads. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a chapter in my book because and I wanted to talk about it because we do this all day long. I've done this all day long and probably have done it in other professions as well, which is why we gravitated toward doing this as a teacher. Yeah. I was always yeah supporting little students at the crossroads, adult students at the crossroads, but anything mm -hmm. that was in a state of change or moving forward. And so I guess that's what I want to talk about. So I want to open it up and I'm going to hand it over to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then tell us a little bit about maybe how we met. Yeah. Yeah. Those are both, uh, it's fun to get into that latter part. So I, Dan Hawkinson, uh, live in Northern California area as well. And as Heather said, am a leadership coach and a organizational consultant for working with teams and am loving that work. And as we'll uh, probably play out a little bit in this conversation today, Heather was a part of that journey with me. Uh, that has not been my journey all along. Um, the primary bulk of my vocational career, even till just about almost a year ago now, or approaching a year ago, um, was serving as a pastor vocationally in a number of different roles, most recently in a lead pastor role. And so what we can talk about that, about hitting those crossroads, I am <laughs> like, I am like many others have been through a pretty significant career pivot in doing something different. And so certainly understand and have walked and am walking in that journey, but I'm enjoying it very much at this, uh, at this juncture. So, and we met, um, I should have, we should have confirmed this, but was that like 2018, maybe earlier? Um, oh man. So I don't remember years very well. I just kind of think about how old my kids were. So I oh. think I had, a uh, uh, one in a uh, freshman and one in, uh, a junior. So yeah, yeah, probably about three years ago. Yeah, it must have been. I think it maybe it was around 18, in fact, because I was uh, actually going to be going just about to be going on a sabbatical from the church that mm -hmm. I was serving at, taking a, a brief sabbatical. And you had kind of come on the radar of our church prior to my getting a chance to meet you. And with my being in that lead role, I kept hearing all of these <laughs> things about Heather Penny and and this is a, a a side version of our interactions, but I was like, well, she's just doing this with the women. And I was, as I was hearing more, I was always like, wait a second, that's unfair. Like I want, and I want, I want to meet this person and get into some interactions. And so that yeah. that's at least my version of the story. It eventually got us to a place where um, we connected about some of those dimensions of bringing your leadership coaching and your work into some spaces with us at that church context. But as you said, more importantly than even that, a friendship grew between you and Darren and Michelle and I. And so really thankful for that. Um, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there and then we can pick it up. <laughs> that's good. It, I'm so glad you brought that up because that's, I, I am flashing back to you coming up to me and I had done two conferences for yeah. just the women. And I remember you coming up to me saying, yeah, I'm over this. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. it was. It's the truth. I was like, our 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 men need this too. I need to want yes. us to enter into some of those things, which was really a great uh, a great piece. We did we did a piece of that together, uh, yes. involving you and your husband Darren, and uh, really really good. So, yes. and then somewhere along the way, in there, I began uh, receive. You began. I began entering in as getting coaching from you, which was really helpful for me as well, really valuable uh, to me as well. Yeah, love it. And I love that our paths continue to keep crossing. So of course, when I thought of Crossroads, I thought Dan Hawkinson, because uh, I got to meet you at the Crossroads. I've got to see you help other people through the Crossroads. And now you're kind of on the other side, opening your own company, and you are definitely supporting people at the Crossroads. And it's been really yeah. fun to watch you transition 
and pick a direction. You know, you didn't just stay stuck at the crossroads. So yeah, that's part of why I wanted to bring you on. I want to say, yeah, tell us a little you. bit about the, that process of choosing. And I remember you were camping out the crossroads for a while, but how uh, did you decide to choose that you knew you wanted to pivot into a different uh, profession? Yeah. So maybe it's important for the listeners to know, and I'm, you know this, Heather, but I'm, I'll just speak directly to sure. your listeners. I think about myself being a listener and I want to hear like, yeah. hey, like you're speaking to me. So if all of those of you that are out there listening, I'm just speaking to you. But to those of you who don't know me, I'm, I um, have historically been a risk averse person. <laughs> I'm not a quick risk taker. And the fact of the matter is, is I like stability. I like structure. I like predictability, maybe too much. So, and those are, those are great spaces for me. So stepping out essentially as an entrepreneur, and I say all this to put it in the context of that crossroads kind of conversation, stepping out uh, from something that had been a vocational career for 20 plus years um, was not an easy thing for me. So I don't want to make it sound like, <laughs> oh, I came to this crossroads and thought, oh, I'm going to make this easy shift and pivot. And it's going to be just so easy for me. It it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. But um, but that's a piece of where this model that we've talked so much about, Heather, that you, you know, that you represent in your book and in all of your coaching and leadership pieces, this clarity, confidence, courage is really helpful. Um, and, uh, and so there was some, there were some real significant pieces for myself and because of the way I wanted to enter into it, um, together with my family, with my wife and, uh, you know, us together, really walking through some of those clarity pieces mm -hmm. and really needing that to be really well grounded in that clarity and in that confidence before we took a step. And maybe this is jumping ahead a little bit, but I would say, uh, in my own journey, but also in my journey of like help walking with others through these pieces, uh, taking some of those first steps, those next steps in the mm -hmm. courage dimension. I didn't know exactly how it would all turn out at, at that juncture. And I didn't, I at, probably when I was first taking some of those first significant steps, I didn't, I didn't envision that I would be here at this place <laughs> that I am right now. Yeah. But that's part of the fun. I mean, it really is. It mm -hmm. can be scary at times, but it's really part of the fun uh, aspect and dimension of the journey. So well said, even as you said that I'm thinking back when I first started my company, yeah. For those of us who are entrepreneurs and trying to do something, we kind of feel this pull. I want to do, for me, yeah. I remember thinking, I want to teach what I want to teach on. I had been paid to teach on everybody else's curriculum and instruction, and I wanted to start creating my own and do that. And that was almost 15 years ago. And I remember that if we knew it, we would do it, right? Yeah. But instead, we're sitting there at the crossroads kind of clutching on to what we know, but knowing we don't want to go back, but we don't want to go forward. So we have this little stuckness in there. Yeah. I love that you're just honest yeah. about that because I had to do that as well. And I guess I want to ask you, what helped you get unstuck? Mm. Yeah, again, I think it was, that's a, that's a great question. And I think it was a piece of some of those, those clarity dimensions of knowing that I wasn't, even though I wasn't entirely sure of knowing what I, what it would look like, what I was stepping into, mm -hmm. knowing that I wanted to make a new step. And that does take some grounding in the, not only the clarity piece, but the grounding in some of those confidence pieces. That was really important for me to walk through that and, um, of, okay, I'm going to take a step, a step of, in a sense, trust, a step of a new venture. And again, if I'm just thinking about speaking directly to the listeners, I, I would imagine that many of, or some of you, if not many of you, or all of you have some, some place of that in your life where you're mm -hmm. thinking about what is before me that could be a new possibility. Um, and yeah, like walking through some of those pieces to be able to explore that is really valuable. And and I think to do it with some level of obviously self-compassion, but some level of that, those dimensions of courage and some level of experimentation. Like I may mm -hmm. try this and it may not be exactly the thing I may need to have to do some tweaking, some refinement. Um, 
and I'm on the early stages of this, but I think you've probably even had some of that, Heather, right? Of like oh, when yeah. you first started, it wasn't exactly what it is today. You know, it's like oh, it yeah. morphs and evolves and shifts over time with us. And that's a part of like the connection mm-hmm. to our own growing, I think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, totally. Even as you were talking, and I'm glad that you brought up the three C's. Clarity is about knowing. Confident is about confidence is about your beliefs, and then courage is about taking action. Mm-hmm. So, I think we worked really hard on the clarity and together. And I remember even just having the conversation of, "What do you want?" You knew what you wanted. Yeah, you didn't know what yeah. it would look like in a career or how it was going to be able to support your family. Yeah, yet, but you knew what yep. you wanted. I think I want to move right into the confidence piece. What were the beliefs that were holding you back and what were the beliefs that helped propel you forward? Mm. Yeah, honestly, this is a little bit hard for me like to admit in these dimensions, but it like um, there were some pieces of self-doubt that were holding me back. Um, And some of the the, like the but what like you said, what you believe, I, I wasn't sure in some dimensions of my own capacity in this regard. And so some of that sense of self-doubt, some of that questioning of myself, um, I knew that I, that I love helping and supporting people and helping people through other dimensions of journey. I'm not doing that just now as a coach and consultant, helping people and teams. That's again, been a part of something that I've done just in a different context. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I heard one of your other podcast guests, Heather, make a similar kind of comment. Like I've been doing work like this for a long time, just yes. been just doing it now in this dimension, um, in a, in a new way and in a mm-hmm. more fo- focused way. Um, so those were some beliefs that I had to hold on to and, and to trust of, okay, I'm going to trust that there is, uh, and it was, I think a part of it was a, a clarity that shifted into the confidence about, um, it was time for me to do something new. And while I say that, like I was, I had, I had and have so much gratitude for the two decades plus that I spent in those previous dimensions of vocation. But, Mm -hmm. but there was a clear readiness that um, for me to stay in that would have been simply to stay in what had been um, comfortable and, you know, very well known, and it wouldn't be stretching me to the, to the levels of growth that were true with what was really, um, what was really going on inside, inside of me. Yeah. I love that. It's making me think of a memory and I hope you're okay. If I bring this up, if, you, sure. if you're not, we'll yeah. edit it out. Okay, Dan. <clears throat> sure. But um, I think before we take that kind of leap of faith or move into the courage piece, we usually have to try one last thing. Mm, and I have watched yeah. people do this. It's the death throes, so to speak, of I have to check off this box, especially for those who are risk adverse. And I myself am risk adverse. If we don't try this one last thing, we're always going to wonder. Yeah. And I, I witnessed this happening to you. I remember we were standing at a conference mm-hmm. and you had one last thing you wanted to try. Do you remember that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You want to yeah, share yeah, that? Yeah, totally. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were in Colorado, uh, <laughs> you and Darren and Michelle and I, and yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I always tell people is, yep, try that one last thing because yeah. you never want to doubt it. Yeah. So even as I say that I never shame anyone or make them feel an embarrassment of trying that one last thing, because I, what I tell people is you got to look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. And I never want you doubting that you didn't try that one last thing, one last idea, one last innovation, one last phone call, one last meeting, because when that happens, it confirms I'm ready. Yeah. That confirmation word is important as well. And I think Mm -hmm. that's a great point that you're highlighting there, Heather, that I think that really is significant. Um, Yeah. I just like, I think, yeah, we need to have that. And I think one of the powerful things, don't you think, Heather, I'd love to hear your mm-hmm. comments on this, but don't you think like one of the powerful things of coaching, I think about this when I've received coaching, mm-hmm. but also in my providing that for others is when you have some of that safe space for listening and being a sounding board and, um, and consideration of maybe, Hey, there's this one last thing and you're not in that dynamic, you're not trying to push someone, you know, to an agenda or trying to get them to a place before they're ready. Mm -hmm. There's a different ones of us have a different sense of timing for when we kind of feel like, 
oh, I'm ready. And if, if somebody's not ready, then you, it's like, okay. Um, and because then, then you won't have had that clarity that really gives you the strength to carry it forward. And yeah, you certainly saw that and were patient and gracious with me in the midst of it, even <laughs> oh. just as a friend. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's really important. I think just another dimension, if I yeah. can just throw in there, and I don't know whether this will connect to all of your listeners, um, but you know, we've interacted about this. I do think in some of the dimensions of growth that some of these crossroads conversations, and this is woven into your book as well, there's, there is some of the, this inner work dimension as well. So in addition to coaching, there were some segments of some inner work that I was doing out of who I am and some of my particular beliefs, but even engaging counseling at certain dimensions of that um, as a piece of inner work. And I know that in some of the coaching and like leadership coaching and other dimensions of consulting that I'm doing now, there's there is an interconnectedness to a human being not just doesn't have to be a leader, but a human being's willingness to do some of that inner work connected to how they walk through crossroads and what those various um, possibilities would be. Tell me, I'd love to hear your comments oh, on that as yeah. well. I love that. I love that you brought that up because I always like to lead with that. I'm very transparent about the fact that I usually have a coach and a counselor on call. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If not working with it. And I'm yeah. just thinking about, oh, I just hired a counselor last Friday who's going to work a little bit more with me and the stories and yeah. how I, context for my life. And I'm really excited to, to work with her for the purpose of serving my clients better, but yeah. also so that I can step into really the life that I'm made for. Yeah. And you have a sixth sense. Every human does. When yeah. something's holding you back. And when I want to say the kindest thing you can do is go get a guide. Someone yeah. who specializes in yep. helping you move forward, helping you get things resolved. Coaching is about moving forward. Um, counseling is about kind of looking backwards and getting some things resolved. And Dan, I had a sixth sense. Something's pulling on me. Uh, I don't need a coach. And I have a coach that I love as well, but I don't need a coach pushing me forward. I've got that nailed. What I can uh, feel is a little bit of this yeah. lingering of it needs some attention and I'd rather not, to be honest. I'm not the type yeah. that loves doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's an accountability for myself to say, yeah, you got to practice what you preach. You're feeling that pull on you mm -hmm. to give attention to something in your background. Mm -hmm. Just embrace mm -hmm. it. Find a good guide that is going to sit with you in it. Yeah, right. I love the word guide. It's one that I think is uh, is useful as well. And I think another word that you used, Heather, that I think is really important is stories. And mm -hmm. uh, and that's a part of connected, even, you know, that gets embedded into some of the, your work with the three C's and even the confidence pieces. We're constantly telling ourselves stories. And a part of moving through the crossroads is considering the possibilities of new stories. That's mm -hmm. what I I think experienced in this, we all go through multiple, if you live long enough, like for those <laughs> yes. of us, Hey, I'm, I'll yeah. just announce because I'm announcing anywhere I can announce to your Paul, your podcast listeners. I'm a proud grandparent these days. I know. So Congratulations. If you, <laughs> if you live old enough to be a grandparent, then you've probably gone through multiple crossroads in your yes. life, not just one. And, um, and I, and I think that one of the things that happens at a crossroads is learning to consider options that you might not have considered before mm. options of there could be a new story. There could be a new way of being. I mean, that's been one of, even in some of the coaching and things that I've done, I've had some really fun settings where, and it's not, it's not, uh, like forced, it's not like formula but at just the right time with two or three different key leaders, just when it comes like just at the right time with them, where, mm -hmm. because they're there to say, what if, and they'll, they'll identify a pattern where they're maybe stuck or something. And what if they're, what other options, you know, for being in those kinds mm -hmm. of situations are there for you? And it's so fun sometimes when people have like this light bulb, like they've never considered there's yeah. another option for them to yep for the way for them to show up in that sitting. And then even just having the consideration of maybe there is another way of being like, mm -hmm. 
I don't even know what that would be for. Mm -hmm. And I was at that juncture in some respects of like, I don't know what I would. I graduated from college, went straight to a master's program that was preparing me for pastoral ministry, did that for 20 plus years. And like, I don't know what else I would do if I, and I had to open myself up to, there could be another story. There's a, there are other options. Um, so I feel like that was a little bit of a long rambling, but no, I, I love that. No, no, no. You, you were right you on point, right on point, Dad, because <laughs> it makes me think of a friend who just moved and you, actually she's in Tennessee and she, we were just talking and I said, she, she, you know, when you have change, it's very vulnerable and you're, it's nerve wracking. Mm. And we're dealing with so many things from everything from tr- finding new friends to finding a new doctor to do they like me at my job? I mean, the vulnerability is just off the scales. And then she was kind of going down the road of, am I going to be successful? Can I afford a home here? Can I, you know, all this stuff. And I said, hang on, hang on. This is just chapter one. Like you yeah, just yeah, started yeah. a whole new book you're writing here. This mm. is chapter one. You still got a lot of chapters to go. Don't worry. Good. You're going to tap, you know, tackle chapter two and then chapter three. And so seeing our life in the context of a book that we're writing and that we're the author of it, and maybe we're done with some books that we're writing a new one. Yeah. That's very exciting. And then you can see that people kind of shift in their thinking saying, Oh, that's right. This is just the yeah. first chapter of this new yeah. adventure. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, in my book too. And I guess I want to speak to this a little bit more too, Dan. Um, who joins us at the crossroads is critical, right? Yeah. And in my book, I talk about three different styles of people that I have witnessed. And I call them melters, uh, pausers, and speedies. Do you remember that part of the book? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the melters are the ones. And, and let me just say, all of these, I have been at one point or another. I get uh-huh. to the crossroad. I am melting down because I don't trust myself. I'm dealing with false beliefs. I have no nice guide there. I've got someone pushing me to do something and turn left and I don't want to turn left, you know? Uh So I'm melting down. And then I've got these speedies where I'm like, I just want to go full speed ahead. I'm just going to plow right through. I'm not even going to think about what I feel. I'm just moving on. As I matured, I began to realize, oh, there's a whole nother group. It's the pausers Mm -hmm. who are Mm -hmm. slowing down. They're building a campfire. They're asking each other kind questions. I think how we treat ourselves and who we surround ourselves with at the crossroad is so important. And I just mm-hmm. wanted to see if you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I definitely, I think that that really is like, yes, those, those dimensions are super important. You mentioned that you've been, maybe you've been touched on all three at various junctures. Oh, yeah. uh, and I, I think a lot of us can identify with that. Maybe we tend to gravitate more towards one. Mm-hmm. What has helped you to shift from some of those different roles? I'm curious. Oh, you're not interviewing me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interviewing you, man. <laughs> I thought All we right. were having a conversation. This is back and forth. <laughs> All right, I'll start. Um, I will say kind guides. Mm-hmm. I think I lived with a false belief initially of just, I got to figure this out by myself. I got, I'm on my own. I got to figure this out. And I didn't have a discernment of, I didn't feel like I could allow myself to reach out, nor did I feel like I had a good discernment of who I should reach out to. Mm. So, and that's part of my story and my background that I had to refine that process and say, wait a minute, I don't want to reach out to a melter. I don't want to reach out to a speedy. I want to reach out to a fellow pauser. I'm just going to come alongside me, build a campfire at the crossroad there, and you know, make some some mores and say, hey, I'm here with you to ask you the questions. I think for me, it was learning that I don't have to isolate. I don't have to figure this out by myself. Mm -hmm. And then learning to attract those type of people and also just be honest. If there are people trying to push me through or you should do this or you should do that, I just have to learn to say, yeah, that's not helping me. (laughs) I've got mm-hmm. so many decisions in front of me. I got to slow this down. Can you just stay with me in this to help me think through it? Yeah, I think that's super good. I wonder, Heather, honestly, if they're like, I because I, I think it's a lot of fun, the different terminologies. But for some people who might get stuck, they, again, I don't know how you would frame this in terms of your terminology, but they, sometimes people could use a little bit of a speedy of like a, Okay. You've paused a line (laughs) and I kind of know what you mean by that. Like, I don't know that we would ever say we need a melter, like, (laughs) or we need to do the meltdown thing, but like sometimes people 
they're not pausing just for reflection. They'll uh-huh. just, I'm going to stay until I've got everything all figured out. And you're like, yeah, you don't have to have everything all figured out to take one step. So there's, I guess what maybe, I guess from my perspective, note that sometimes those mm. healthy pausers, they may, they're not going to encourage us to stay there forever. They'll mm-hmm. pause with us, but they may at times prompt us or we may prompt others to, okay, now it is time to step forward and act. And I love that you brought that up. Sorry, keep going. And and sometimes it's, it is just taking that first step. Mm -hmm. Um, The, um, the, the courage, the, the confidence and the courage can grow as we begin taking some small steps. And again, I think you were, you were obviously an important part of that for me. And I think back to this dimension of who will we meet at the crossroads? Like, Mm -hmm. Some of those people, uh, it's the role that they fulfill sometimes with us, but sometimes the people they connect us to. I mean, it, mm. one of the significant things that happened for me during that juncture was um, through my reaching out to you, looking for some dimensions of like, mm-hmm. hey, can, can I step into some aspects of even some training or some other things like this with you? You introduced me to James Warwick, mm-hmm. and that was a great yeah. like connection that was a part of helping to mm-hmm. take some steps for me moving forward. So I think sometimes those people that are there with us at the crossroads, they're able to maybe meet us at a, in a certain way, but then they're maybe sometimes also able to connect us to somebody else that can help us through the next um, turn, so to speak. I love that you brought that up because it was exactly where I was going to go. Oh. Uh, James, and I love that you brought his name up. So James will work. We're going to talk about you for a minute. Um, I don't know if you need to edit that. If you didn't want <laughs> names. Oh, no, no. Or... We're not going to edit that. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> this is a shout out to James. Good. Yeah. I'll um, give a shout out as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, James is someone I hired when I was trying to figure out who I was going to be kind of in my second act. And I remember I was interviewing. He's a coach. I was interviewing at quite different places. I want to say this is about 12 or 13 years ago. And after about three or four interviews, he finally said, what, what do you think about being a coach? And literally I'm like, what's that? (laughs) What would that look like for me? I knew what it was for him, but what would it look like for me? Because it wasn't a really clear career path. And so what I had to grapple with is, do I want to carve out my own path? What I realized is, yes, I do. What I didn't like was the vulnerability, the fear that came with it. Yeah, It's like, I wanted that. And I was in that catch 22. I wanted both. And I remember one of my favorite and least favorite conversations I had with him was he'll literally say, Heather, why are you hesitating? And I'm like, what do you mean why I'm hesitating? I'm scared to death. I don't know how to move out. And he just kept saying, why are you hesitating? Why are you hesitating? And so you're right. We can over pause at the campfires. We can, we need kind voices that say, you got your clarity. You got your confidence. It's now time to get your courage. And because he did that for me, and I did step out and I got to do something that I was successful in. I have done that for numerous people. Yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, that's really evident. And he has as well. And then you, it's a fun connection circling back that then you introduced that you connected the two of us. And yeah. then James stepped into that with some of that training for me as well, which uh, has been a really uh, a fun thing and helped launch me as well as, as you know, as James was a part of that with you too. So. Yeah. Yeah, As he asked fun. you, why are you hesitating? Uh, <laughs> and maybe he didn't exact ask it in exactly that way. But uh, I do remember a phrase somewhere along the way of like, Dan, what's getting in your way is uh, basically you're, you're, you're the, you are the one getting in your own way, something along those lines. And, <laughs> and uh, of course, in a coach style way, he wouldn't have made it in just a direct statement like that, but, yeah. um, but have highlighted that awareness uh, through some skillful questions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's good. What was your clarity on that? If you remember, I don't know if you can remember that question or that line of thought. When he asked you what was getting in your way, did you have any clarity of what was getting in your way? Yeah, I remember, I think I remember one of the early conversations. I'm sure if I pull out some of my notes, I would you know, be able to identify this is that there was things of like, there were questions around my beliefs. It's kind of going back to that piece Mm. we were talking about earlier about stories. Um, There were questions Mm. about what I was believing about myself, what I was Mm -hmm. believing about uh, even, you know, 
even vulnerable aspects like financial provisions for our family, stepping out of a career path that it's really the only thing I'd known since, um, you know, mm-hmm. virtually I was a teen teenager yeah. almost or something like yeah. that. It's like, oh, okay. Like, and so what are your beliefs about, about yourself? What are your beliefs about financial provisions for your family? What are your beliefs about this and that? And so re-examining some of my beliefs that helped me to see that there were some new possibilities that I had not yet explored. I love that. What's one of your favorite, I'm going to totally put you on the spot. So let me know if you need a minute to think about it, but what's one of your favorite beliefs that you're reaching for now that is supporting you moving forward? Hmm. That's a, that's a good question. Thanks, Heather. The, <laughs> one of my favorite beliefs is that I get to help people. And that is mm-hmm. honestly like so fun for me. I mean, mm-hmm. earlier today, I had a half, I had a half day session with a team that I'm just mm-hmm. starting to work with. And like, and I don't say that in a sense, when I say like, when I say like, I get to help people, I don't think that I'm going in with all of the answers, but there is a confidence in what I believe has been entrusted and given to me with some skills that have been learned and developed along the way, what I've benefited from others who have been that kind of a guide for me with some tools and training and things like that. But it's like going in with the sense of like, I'm going to help these people and help. Sometimes as we talk about it's individuals uh, and sometimes it's teams and Mm. the work that I'm doing, like helping teams be better together. And that makes such a difference. And that is, it's honestly so fun. So having that belief, like I'm, I get to go in and help other people, uh, support them toward their success. And in some of these cases, some really positive, important work that they're doing. The group that I was working with earlier today is a, is a nonprofit that is really doing some fantastic, really meaningful work that our world needs. And so if I can just go in and be a small dimension of support to help them Mm. advance their work, a couple of clicks, that's a huge, huge, huge win. And it's, that's really a gift to even just be able to be a part of that. Oh, I love that. Uh, One of the things that I talk with people about is this kind of idea of the 60, 40 rule, or I like to think about it as a 70, 30 rule, which is 70% of the time you love what you do. 30% of the time, it's the have to in order to make your company run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about that. What's some of your 70, 30 or 60, 40, or maybe we're over here at 80, 20 or something. I don't know. Either I don't know what, I don't know what the percentage is yet, but I (laughs) definitely know the pieces I had told, uh, my wife not long ago, or maybe else I was thinking about, I'm like, I had thought of three dimensions of my work and the work that I do with people and teams, like, Mm -hmm. and I absolutely love it. The, the work of, and when you, as you talked about, you know, going out as an entrepreneur, like the work of getting new clients. So the work with clients, whether it's teams or individuals, I absolutely love it, love it, love it. <laughs> the work of getting new clients, there are aspects of that that I like and aspects of that that are um, outside of my normal comfort zone. Um, and then the, for me personally, the business side of some of the, those aspects of like, and honestly, that's where I would, if you would have asked me a couple of years ago, Dan, do you ever think you'll start your own business or be an entrepreneur? I would have said, no way. There's no <laughs> way like that. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm the guy to, to do that kind of thing, the business side. So essentially like, you know, like you've talked about Heather, like essentially, so I'm, I've hired somebody, um, like a business coach to help me with the business side of yep. business that I'm starting. And it's like, yep. Uh, so like, yeah, it's crazy, but those aspects, but I'm able to hold that in a space of Mm -hmm. these are things that are not my natural strengths. They're Mm -hmm. not my natural interests. And by the circumstances of the things that I've been in, I've always been a part of teams where I've had, or leading in teams where I've had people to support me in some of those dimensions Mm -hmm. of like, Hey, can you figure out these pieces or handle some of these, like, details. And now I'm having to do those myself. And yeah. <laughs> so it's a humbling learning curve. <laughs> Isn't it? It was very sobering for me when I realized I am my own IT department. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> we really took that one for granted, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, well, I've loved this time, Dan. I think as we wrap up, 
Uh, I want to ask, and I ask this of every, every person that I talk with, I'm a huge encourager. I believe that oftentimes we just need one person in our corner believing in us. And I guess I would say as everybody who's out there who has dealt with crossroads or in probably in the middle of crossroads and even feeling the vulnerable vulnerability of that space. I guess I want to say, what encouragement do you have for people as they're grappling with the crossroads mm-hmm. in their life? Buy your book. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Can I put it on the screen so we can show yeah, it? I do. <laughs> um, yes, there you go. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Um, no, honestly, that, yeah, that's sincere. But I would, I would just maybe pick up on the word that we've talked about mm. through here. I do think there's value in being a guide. I know that could sound like that self-serving. You're, you're uh, a coach. I'm stepping into mm-hmm. the space of coaching and consulting. But I do, I've found that in my own life. But have, uh, as you walk through the crossroads, have some people that can help you so that you're not walking through it alone, I think is, mm-hmm. is one thing I would say, um, in addition to buying your book. <laughs> a second thing is as you walk through that model of the clarity, confidence, courage is really helpful. And as you walk through some of that, as you begin to have clarity and begin to become grounded in some of your confidence, then take some small steps, take some mm-hmm. steps. You might not have the whole picture all completely figured out yet, but begin to take some small steps and, um, and taking, you'll be able to take increasing steps as you get a little bit mm. more familiar with what's happening. What would you add to that, Heather? I love that. Um, what would I add? Don't be afraid to ask for help. I'm going to add two pieces mm. to that. Don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out. And don't be afraid to tell them if it's not the help you want. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Sometimes that's people good. like they use all their courage up to ask for help and then they kind of just get sucked into someone else's agenda or ideas. I want to say, stay in the driver's seat as you invite in guides into your life, stay, Mm. stay in the driver's seat of your own car, of your own life. Uh, Keep the pen in your hand as you're writing the story of your own life Yeah, and keep inviting in guides that support you in holding that pen or in holding your space in that driver's seat. Cause those are the, those are the truest servants of guides that mm-hmm. aren't trying to take your power away. They're not, they're trying yeah. to empower you to yeah. eventually drive your own car and, and not be needed. And I think that's what yeah. I loved on um, this example of James as we both worked with him. He literally said, I'm working out of myself out of a job. My job is to launch you for you not to need me. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I've loved that his servant's attitude on that. I feel the same. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, that's good. He's been a yeah. good model. All right. Well, any last thoughts before we wrap up? I'm uh, grateful to be a part of it with you, Heather. I'm really grateful for, like, as we both have said, our friendship, but you're being a part with me through the crossroads. Mm. I'm a I'm a beneficiary of that. So <laughs> thank you. Oh, you're so welcome, Dan. I've learned a lot from you as well. I'm grateful for our friendship. <laughs> Likewise. All right. Take care of everyone and um, go find your clarity. Go find your confidence. And go find your courage. You got this. Cheer and yawn. Thanks for listening. And please drop a review. It really helps us out wherever you're listening from. And if you want to find out more about your clarity, your confidence, and your courage, go ahead and get my book and you can find it at heatherpenny.com. Cheering you all on. Bye.